Welcome back, it's Play in the Shed Day again. And on today's to-do list is a little bit more lathe action. Because today I want to make a mini dead blow hammer. I'm going to use a bit of this aluminium, brass and delrin. So to work out the dimensions of the hammer, I'm going to use a technical drawing here. There'll be a centre. There'll be a del runner on one end and brass on the other, and they will screw into the centerpiece. Now that centerpiece will end up being hollow. And originally I thought I would make a wooden handle, but subsequently decided to make it out of aluminium. Anyway, off we go and let's do the center of the hammer. Step one is to put a thread in one end and I'm using a, an M10 thread for the, the hammer um, ends. So it's just a simple matter of drilling and then tapping an M10 thread. Yes, I know I should be using my tailstock collet to hold the tap, but I just couldn't be bothered putting it in. Anyway, this did the job. Now I'll part that off to the length I want the centre of the hammerhead. So far I've got a solid piece of round bar with a tapped thread in one end. So now I want to hollow it out, but not all the way obviously because I want to keep the tapped end in. So I'll just roughly measure that on a drill. And this is about 25mm diameter stuff and I'm just using a, going to end up using a 20mm drill to drill out the centre. But I'll do it in two steps. My large blunt drill is calling out in pain, but it'll get through it. Okay, so I've got a hollow with a thread in one end and I need a thread in this hollow end and I've got a piece of 20mm round bar that fits perfectly so I'll just part off a lump of that about 3.5mm uh, or so thick and then I'll weld that in so that I can put a thread in the other end. Because this is going to be a dead blow hammer, I want to fill that hollow with lead. Now, lead pellets, as in ones that are used in a shotgun, are almost impossible to obtain in Australia. So I've got some very small lead sinkers, which I think will do the job. So what I'm doing is filling up this void so that I've got about, it's going to be about three quarters full. In other words, um, enough space 
for the lead pellets to jump around and thus causing the, the dead blowness of the hammer. Okay, I've got the number that I need, so I'll just set them aside. And you can see that they're small enough to fit into that M10 hole, so I'll be able to fill them up once I've got the other end in and um, the hole, the, the thread tapped. So it's time for a little bit of TIG welder action. Well, obviously that welded up end looks rather nasty, so it's back into the lathe to clean that up. With the end nice and straight, I now can drill and tap this end. Now that I've got the centre of the head done, I can make both of the hitting surfaces that go on each end of that centre. And so one of them is going to be brass and the other one Delrin. doing a test fit and yep it goes on nice nice and firm I've cleaned up the cut face, that one's ready to fit. I'm not worried about the outside diameters of these because I'm going to run the lathe over them once they're fitted into the centre of the head so that they all line up perfectly.
I've decided to just put an aluminium handle on this, so I'm going to use this 16mm um, diameter aluminium. And I'm going to put a, an M6 thread on one end of it because I want to make a little brass knob for one end of the handle, just to pretty it up a bit. And a knurl on the end of the handle will just look just that bit nicer than a smooth handle and it'll make it easier to hang on to. And then just some little pretty bits to break up the knurl using this button head insert. As I'm just a backyard bodger and not an expert welder I'm not going to enjoy this bit but it's got to be done. Got to stick the handle on somehow. Okay, here it is in all its not all that beautiful welding beauty. But I'm going to leave it in its natural welded state rather than try to dress that up. But I will give it a bit of a polish. bit of metho on a rag just gets rid of the polishing compound. There we go. That's not too bad for a backyard effort. Time to make the knob for the end of the handle. So just tapping a M6 thread on a piece of brass as this will eventually screw into the end of the handle. It's time for my shed made ball turner to come into action. So I just screw that knob into a mandrel. The mandrel's got to be got to sort of poke out that far um, so that you can get the swing on the ball turner. And as it's brass, it cuts fairly easily anyway. I want this end to be the same diameter as the handle, so I'm just taking little cuts and then measuring and cutting a little bit more again until I get it right. Now it's time for a bit of sanding action because as everyone knows, everyone loves a shiny knob. Right, we're all finished and ready for assembly. I've got the brass face on and now I can 
put all those little lead sinkers into the void. Just in case you haven't come across the concept of a dead blow hammer before, a dead blow hammer um, is supposed to stop the hammer from bouncing. The, um, the movable weight inside, in this, type, in this case um, the lead, is supposed to damp it down and stop the hammer from bouncing back once it hits something hard. When you hit something hard with a normal hammer, it will normally bounce back. This tends to make the hitted object also bounce, and in some cases we don't want that to happen. This particular hammer is going to be used to seat pieces in the milling vise, and so I want it to be nice and solid and not bounce around. So here's a bit of a demo. Here's my old hammer. You can see how that it bounces on the hard surface, whereas the new one doesn't. It's like magic. That was a fun, easy build, but very satisfying result.